Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the John Deere Z345R. I'm going to show you all of the features of this machine, plus all of the service points, so stick with us here and we'll get started. All right guys, so we're talking about the John Deere Z345R. Uh, this is a John Deere Z-Track mower, so it is a zero turn mower as a more familiar term for a lot of people. Uh, very common, you know, having your different brands such as Grasshopper and Kubota, Toro, those, all those different brands all have a zero turn mower. John Deere's is called the Z-Track. Uh, this is the smallest John Deere Z-Track family, so it is a Z3. Uh, the 45 here indicates that it's actually a 42 inch deck, and the R is the trim level which uh, just like in most John Deere equipment, you have E's, M's, and R's, and they all specify different trim levels, R being the top of the line. So we'll show you some of those features in this. Uh, first thing I wanna talk about is just the ease of access and the comfortability of this mower. Uh, that's one thing that a lot of people don't think about is, you know, you do have to get onto this mower. Uh, it's not an automotive style, it's a little different. So you do have to climb onto the operator platform here. And as you can see, you have a space here, uh, easy to get up onto, or if you need to be able to get up on the side to have something to hold onto, you do have something that's very open. You can get on, on this side, that side. The deck is far enough underneath and towards the middle. You don't have to step on the deck to get on it. Uh, you can get on here or the front, wherever you're at. Depending on operator, you know, sometimes you will have to hold on, but you have that access there. Uh, another thing too, as I'm getting on, if I was getting on here, you can see we do have these rubber floor mats. Uh, for one, those are going to keep you from slipping. These are also, they also serve another function as an anti-vibration for spending those hours on this mower. You can rest your feet on those mats, keep that vibration, kind of helps with your legs throughout the day of spending time on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get on. Uh, as I'm getting on, I want to point out the seat here. Guys, very thick cushioned seat. Um, this is an R model, so it has the top of the line seat. It's one piece with a drain hole there. You do have these ridges in it to keep a little bit of airflow to try to keep you cool. You've also got these rubber armrests. And as I sit down on there, guys, you know, I'm a bigger guy, um, 5'11", 270, and I'm telling you this seat has plenty of support for me. Not only is this seat cushion, but we do have springs underneath, and I'll show you those in a minute. As I was talking about on these armrests, as you can see, they're not too, like I said, bigger guy. I've got still plenty of wiggle room here in between them. Uh, they're also rubber. They're grippy. Um, you know, if you're, you know, using your using your levers here and you are able to rest your arms on here, they're, they're not just going to slip off because they are rubber. They're soft. They're pliable. Uh, another thing on comfortability of this mower is the hand grips here. They do have the foam that you can see. Um, they go out and make these curvatures to where you can pick your position. Some people want their hands here. They want them out here to be a little more comfortable or maybe even as far out as here. But you do have that option being as how far out that foam goes. Uh, features wise that we talked about that kind of goes along with the comfortability. A lot of these, the standard models, the E's and the M's, these handles come up straight and straight in. Now it doesn't seem like a very big deal, it's pretty simple, but this is an ergonomic design, like I said before, to give you the different range of grip. You know, this has a little bit of a curvature that allows you to be a little further away from your body, whereas this may be uncomfortable for some people being too close in. So that is an R feature, like I said, doesn't seem like much, but could mean the world to somebody, uh, you know, to make them more comfortable there. So keep that in mind. Um, these are also adjustable, so you have nuts and bolts here to adjust these up these are in the top position and the furthest out but you say you were a smaller operator and needed to drop them down bring it closer you can adjust those there um, and that is adjusted by a tool that is made onto this machine that we'll go over a little bit more here in a minute but as far as being comfortable um, being easy to fit different operators you have those functions as well as this seat does go back and forth for the taller operator you can be back, you can be forward for the shorter operator. You have those different ranges uh, there to fit your height. Um, also, one thing that a lot of people don't think about is you do have this raised front here, this inclined position on, for your feet. These, are, these mowers are made for you to have your legs out front, especially if you're a taller operator, as when you pull these handles in and you go to push forward, if you have your legs out on those, you do have full range of motion for your sticks. If you didn't and had your feet resting here at all times for that taller operator, as you can see, it hits my legs and I don't have full range of motion. So that, that styling of that platform is very important and does serve a purpose. So just keep that in mind. 
uh, from here, guys, that's that's most of the um, accessing the mower and comfortability features. So now we'll just show you some of the main functions of the mower and the different controls. So we'll start here at, at my right. This is your main control panel. As you see, you do have your throttle here indicating, you know, your up throttle, down throttle. Um, and then this indicates your starting position. On this mower, you do not have a choke. You know, a lot of mowers have that choke button that you'll pull up here. You do not have that on this machine. So to start this mower, you'd go all the way forward, turn your key just like normal. If I turn that key to one position, you do have an hour meter here. So you can see, you can track, you know, your hours on this machine by this right here. This is going to be your PTO engage. This is what's going to kick your blades on and off. A lot of, um, a lot of different mowers have a lever, um, a manual lever that actually pulls a cable to engage, to engage those blades. And as we all know, having that cable, continuous motion, years of motion, those things tend to break, snap, then we have to replace them. On this model, you do just have this electric push button, real easy, up is on, down is off. If that were to ever give out on you, that's simply just changing out this switch module, plugging in a new one. Very easy, a lot less frustrating than having to change a cable. So very good feature there as well, also something small. You do have cup holders here. Uh, for whatever beverage you may prefer, we all know when we're out on these mowers during the summer, it's hot, want something to drink, you do have that option there. Um, as we move up forward here on the right side, we do have, this is going to be our deck height adjustment. Right here, we're in transport mode, we're at the top and we're locked in, but to let it down, it's as simple as pulling over to the right and letting it go all the way down. Now, this does have a cut height adjustment of one inch all the way up to four inch, and these are going to be in quarter inch increments. So you have one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, two, so on and so forth, all the way up to four inches. Now, you can do one of two things here to raise this mower deck back up. One would be the traditional, just pull it up by hand, or you can reach over and push with the foot raise here to raise it all the way up into the lock position. This foot raise is also an R feature. It's something that's not available on the E or M. Uh, so these different comfortability features are why we uh, generally show this model to give you the full range of what is offered there. So that's a great feature. So you're, to set your deck height, you have this tool here. I'll point out that it's notched and curved, and that's uh, for a certain purpose. So when you slide it into these different notches, say we wanted to be at three inches, we'd slide the notch in, let the tool fall. Therefore, it's not going to come out whenever you're driving down, going over those bump, that bumpy ground or whatever you're doing, that thing's not going to come out. And it also serves a dual purpose. As you can see, it does have a wrench end on it. You're going to use this tool for those different adjustments we've been talking about. So to adjust these handles to fit your height, this will actually undo that nut right there on these handles on both sides. Another thing that it will adjust or actually loosen up would be this bolt right here. This is also going to go into that accessibility. This will loosen this bolt here so you can actually get to your deck underneath. So we'll go ahead and take that off for purposes to show you some more underneath the deck there. But that tool, just so you know, is a dual function tool, not only to hold your deck in the right height, but also to loosen these various bolts on this machine. So as we are to work our way around, we are on the right side here. If we come to the front, one thing we'll notice is that we do have a panel here. It is upside down for when you're sitting in the seat. You can bend over, uh, look between your legs there and see the different functions, see what you need to do if you're machine won't run it won't kick into gear that may give you some tips on what to do to get started here orange you can see we do have our parking brake very simple down is parking brake off up is parking brake on as you can see we have a hole right here next to the parking brake you have a corresponding one on the other side this you will also use that tool that i just showed to adjust your tracking now tracking is going to be the distance that your levers go to make your turns or to make your back wheels turn so sometimes you'll get to where maybe those levers you have to push one a little further than the other to go straight because your tracking is a little bit off but you can adjust that you can use your operator manual to see how to adjust which way in and out to get that to get those level to where forward and back have the levers at the same at the same distance there so very important to know that that's there and to be able to adjust that um, as we keep coming around right here on the deck, I want to point out um, this is a nice feature on this deck. This is going to be a washout port. Turn, take your water hose, screw it in there, turn the water on, 
kick those blades on and it'll sling that water around underneath the deck to clean it out. Now, one thing that I always tell my customers, one thing I always recommend, the less water on a mower, the better. That's backwards to some people. Some people think you wanna wash these things every time you get done. I'm telling you from experience, water creates rust, rust creates problems. The more water you can keep on off of this machine, the better. What I always suggest is to take your blower, um, or if you don't have a blower, uh, maybe you have an air compressor or something, if you can do air on this mower rather than water, you're way better off, so I always recommend that. Um, but that is a good feature for if you get that gunked up junk underneath, that wet grass, whatever that may be, you can use that to help get rid of some of that debris. Uh, next to going back, this is another simple thing, very easy but very nice feature. You do have your, uh, your gas cap here, but you can see you have this hole here and this is also angled down. Sometimes we have issues and miss a little bit, spill a little bit of gas there. Having that uh, drain out port right there will let that go straight to the concrete or whatever and keep that gas off your machine. So that's another, um, another awesome feature. I was talking a little bit about those springs on the seat. So while we're here, I'll show those. This seat also, I'll mention how easy it is to just lift this seat up. Guys, very easy to pivot, lift it up. It'll rest there on the front of your machine. Here are those springs. One thing I like to point out about these is they're not the typical rubber spring that you see on these that get old and dry and weathered and they crack and you have to change them these are hard metal springs um, they should last you a long time they're painted to avoid rust but they do have a screw or a bolt right down in the middle of them very easy to change if you need to change those out while we're underneath i'll point out too here that you do have your your service interval sheet this tells you or your sticker here tells you when you need to change the oil check the belts where things are located on the mower your belt tracking patterns all those things are listed here and then underneath, this is gonna be where your battery is stored. A lot of models keep that battery out in the weather, uh, let it be exposed to the elements. We keep ours inside and covered up, better for your battery life. You have another port here underneath. This is gonna be where your operator manual is located. Now, once you've gotten this machine, you decide you don't need your operator manual anymore, well, hey, there you go. You've got you a toolbox built, built in right underneath the seat. You know, put that those extra wrenches in there, screwdrivers, whatever the things may be. You've got that built right in. It's a nice little feature as well. As we're coming around here, we'll talk a little bit about the engine and, the, and how easy it is to perform the maintenance on this engine. Changing the oil is a big one. A lot of guys on mowers like this want to change their own oil. It's uh, easy for them to do. Well, John Deere has gone in and tried to make it even easier for you guys. As you can see, this engine's very open all the way around. You can get to all the components. They're also color coordinated. So you have yellow right here for your oil fill. Your oil fill along with the dipstick attached. Very easy to read. You've got the two arrows there. That's where your oil needs to be to be in the position uh, to run uh, at an optimized uh, performance there. Right here, you've got your yellow. This is gonna be yellow again for oil. This is where you're gonna drain your oil. So that tube right there goes right to your, uh, to your oil pan. And then right here, we can take this cap off and drain our oil out the back. Maybe if that's where you wanna put your drain pan or maybe out the side here whatever is easiest for you um, we, we generally tell people out the back uh, one thing you can do too to make this easier is if you can get this back wheel on the opposite side raised up a little bit maybe you drive it up onto a block or something same thing in the front get that engine a little bit on its side it'll help that oil drain a little better um, but very easy to get to to drain that oil you're not having to get up underneath and undo a plug it's right there on the side super easy here at the rear you got two hand nuts also on top is going to be a little bit of in engine information. It's a 22 horsepower. It's branded deer here, but this is actually a Briggs and Stratton engine. But it tells you right here how many cc's, how many horsepower. And then you've got your two hand nuts that we can undo here. Very easy. Undo those. Get them all the way out here. And you can get right to your air filter. Very easy to pull that guy off, clean it, or replace it super simple no tools needed gotta love that then over here on the right hand side we've got our oil filter and our fuel filter and our serial number plate again like i said very easy to get to you've got this oil filter um, easy to get your hand on it or to get that filter wrench on it i want to point out this this is made into the deck that some people may not notice you do have this little bit of a divot divot here kind of like a bowl so when you pull that filter off and it drains into this into this little bit of a reservoir here it has a drain hole where that oil is going to drain out keeps oil from getting all over the rest of your machine great little feature that a lot of people don't see don't notice or isn't talked about 
but very neat that deer incorporates those things right next to it we've got your inline fuel filter here again very easy to get to you got the two clamps you can take it off replace it toss it out get your new one very simple another thing that i always point out that people don't think about uh, is sometimes you you run into issues with these these uh, fuel pumps here that if you do run into an issue need to change it um, you're not getting fuel to your mower it's not one to start could be that fuel pump very easy to get to it as well so right underneath it you have your serial number here now this will be provided generally on your uh, paperwork from the dealership when you were to get one of these mowers but if you needed that serial number that's where it's located another thing right next to it is going to be your this is for your transmission engage and disengage so you have one of these on each side because on a z-track mower you have two transmissions two motors one to run this wheel one to run that one there are times when if you can't start this mower you can't get it to move you're going to need to disengage those mower those motors so you can push it this is where you would do that you'd reach down flip this one into the unlock same thing on this side unlock it now you've unlocked those motors you can push this thing around and get it to where you need to get it so very important to know where those are and know what those are and put those back into train into the regular driving mode as we come around here we'll just point out the discharge chute spring loaded why in the world would it need to be that way guys you know is when you're you're driving this mower your grass may not be level you're going to run over those different things you don't want something to hang you up same thing with this deck it's got a little bit of float to it it's not rigid these wheels are anti-scalping wheels they're meant to hit those different things to catch those those bumps or maybe those molehills or whatever they are to raise that deck over to protect the underneath part of your deck there so great feature there as well um, we've shown you most of the things on the outside i want to show you a couple of things underneath real quick these are going to be maintenance tips as well getting to that to that belt and to those blades not always the easiest thing but john deere has done done their best to make it easy for you as we showed how easy it is to remove this panel here use your tool undo one bolt take the platform off now you can get to all your deck here underneath so we put our deck holder in the very bottom position lift it off let this deck down now if you needed to service the belt maybe you need to take the blades off and replace them you can now reach all of your all of your pulleys your belt everything underneath to remove this deck you need to change the blades a lot of times that's a very intimidating thing for people intimidating thing for people to do because they don't know how uh, deers made it very simple you have a pin here in the front you would remove this pin take this bar out and then on the back side here you have a pin here as well you would take it out take this pin out on the back there you have a corresponding one on this side you would take it out then you would take your belt off so you would relieve the tension on this pulley take the belt off then your deck would be free to be able to be pulled out turned over and replace those blades put it back under put that belt back on if you have the belt off and you've forgotten how it goes you do have your sheet underneath the seat that you can look at for that belt routing map to help you put that back on another thing that uh, generally on these z-tracks uh, one thing that we really have to watch is the wheels on the front those casters they spin freely they're not like your rear wheels and as you can see there's a little bit of grease on this one here from the factory but if you were to take this bolt off and this washer this is actually a greaseless spindle uh, you can grease it if you'd like you can take take that bolt and washer off put a little grease down in there but what that's actually turning on is two plastic bushings um, so it's it's generally greaseless and it's going to be able to maintain itself but if you'd like to grease that um, you definitely could so guys um, that's a very in my mind very quick very brief but also very um, very detailed overview of this machine so i hope you've liked what you've seen today if you have any other questions please feel free to comment below thanks for watching we'll see you next time